Hi there, my name is Chloe Freeman and I am one of the 2018 recipients of a W. Garfield Weston Fellowship for Northern Research. I am currently a PhD student at the University of Guelph working with Drs. Amy Newman and Ryan Norris on a population of Canada jays in Algonquin Provincial Park. Canada jays, such as the one pictured here, are a quintessential bird of the boreal forest as they maintain territories year-round, meaning they do not migrate south. These birds, also known as gray jays, whiskey jacks, and camp robbers, are able to stay throughout the harsh winter months by caching food throughout the fall that they use for not only their overwinter survival, but also to fuel their late winter breeding period. This means that Canada jays feed nestling as a combination of cached food from the previous fall and fresh food as it becomes available during the spring. Previous research on this population suggests that Canada jays are food limited during the late winter breeding season, However, it is unknown what effect this food limitation has on the young jays. Thus, I set out to investigate the effects of food availability on nesting condition and physiology, and also the potential carryover effects of the early life environment on juvenile survival. To do this, I set out into the park to monitor the nests of all the breeding pairs within the study site. Each nest was assigned to be either a control nest or a supplemented nest, where the supplemented nests received feeders, such as the one shown here, just before the eggs hatched. The feeders re were refilled every two days with food that was rich in essential protein and fats, perfect for the growing nestlings. To look at the effect of this supplementation on the nestlings, we would then visit the nest when the nestlings were roughly 14 days old, which usually meant carrying around a large ladder through the forest, which is quite challenging. But the fruits of our labor are worth it because it means that we are able to ban the nestlings and also take a bunch of measurements to assess their body condition. So we measure things such as their bill, tarsus length, and the length of their seventh primary. And what we found was that supplementation had no effect on either nestling mass or body size at banding, but did have an effect on body condition and feather corticosterone levels, where corticosterone is a hormone that is involved in a bird's response to a stressor. Specifically, supplemented nestlings in 2018 were in better body condition and had lower levels of corticosterone than the controls. Our most surprising result, though, was that the supplementation advanced aid the age of fledge by 30% in 2017 and 17% in 2018. So instead of fledging when they were 23 days old, like the controls, the supplemented birds were leaving the nest when they were 16 to 19 days old. This dramatic acceleration of fledging may have downstream effects on the survival of the fledglings and the recruitment of the individual into the population. Thus, we monitor the survival of the young jays using radio transmitters. These mini backpacks emit a beep at a unique frequency which, is allow which allows us to track down each individual as they leave the nest. Following fledge, we would check in on each bird every three days to check if they were still alive by tracking them down on their territory. Eventually, tracking down the birds by foot became impossible because as the birds got older, they were able to move further distances. So we resorted to following their movements by tracking them from the sky. We did this every month until the fall when we confirmed their survival. A complete analysis of the effect of supplementation on survival is still to come, but until then, I would like to sincerely thank the W. Garfield Weston Foundation for their support. And I'll leave you with this clip of an adult jay feeding the nestling I was holding.